In this video, we are going to look at the Colt License 22 caliber M16 SPR manufactured by Carl Walther of Germany. Um, the M16 SPR is one of four in the series. As you can see here, the M4 carbine, M4 ops, M16 rifle, and the M16 SPR. So let's take a look at what's in the box. When you when you open the box, you're uh, you're greeted by a red plastic envelope, and it's actually folded up in a way to where the decal reads uh, documents enclosed. But I've opened this up and taken photographs of the content, so uh, this doesn't exactly uh, represent what you'll see when you open it up. So you've got the documents on top, and we'll look at that in more detail in a minute. Um, you've got, I think it's like an 18 or 20 round magazine. Um, you've got the rifle itself sitting down here in the middle. Um, packaged pretty well. It's protected pretty good. And then one thing you got to look out for if you buy one of these is you've got a red envelope down here and this says small parts enclosed and we'll look at what's in there uh, shortly so let me uh, get the document bag opened up and get those contents laid out and we'll look at those real quick okay I've laid out the contents of the red document bag and we'll just work from left to right here um, this first item is a brochure from the National Shooting Sports Foundation. Um, I won't go into detail what that is. Uh, next, you have directions for the use of the firearms lock that's included. This red sheet here is um, a multilingual warning. And it states, to avoid damage and disassembly, loosen the barrel nut until the barrel sleeve and compensator are separated by at least 5 millimeters. Only then is it possible to remove the front and rear pins from the upper and lower receiver. And you will see what that references here in a little bit. Here is a limited warranty and certificate of ownership from Umarex. They are the U.S. importer of the Colt licensed Walther 22 Long Rifle Series. Here we have the manual for the rifle. They use one manual for all four firearms that are in the 22 Long Rifle Series. Um, the field stripping of this firearm is very basic. Uh, there is less field stripping to this than there is a traditional 5.56 or 223 AR-15 platform. And uh, here's some technical data. Trying to see if I can find the page real quick that shows the end of the field stripping. I think I went by it. <clears throat> this illustration here shows the back of the receiver. And what they're doing there is they're adjusting the uh, cycling speed of the weapon. Um, this is adjustable to make the weapon function reliably with different 22 caliber loads. So anyway, we'll talk more about the field stripping in a little while. And this here is a, a Umarex um, Walther accessory catalog. And you really see uh, little to no discussion of the accessories for this uh, firearm line. 
It's really kind of neat what they've done for it is it enables somebody who wants to collect these or, or actually take these out and shoot them to have a pretty uh, diversified setup without spending a ton of money. Um, you can buy detachable carry handles, replacement butt stocks. Um, those of you familiar with the SOP Mod program, you'll recognize that as a copy of the SOP Mod stock. Um, replaceable sights, that's a... Uh, what is commonly called the chopped carry handle rear sight. And you'll see on here, we have this copy of the Knight's Armament zero to 300 meter sight. Um, you've got a 10 round magazine. So I stand corrected earlier when I said 18 round or whatever. Um, 30 round uh, holder for the magazines and some other things. And then here's an illustration of the entire Colt licensed uh, series. All right, let me get the uh, parts to this uh, bag here laid out and we'll come back and discuss that. All right, in your red small parts bag, you have the firearm lock, you have this very long uh, hex key you have this wrench and then this small hex key. This, lo this larger long hex key is used for uh, the, mo the adjusting of the cyclic rate of the weapon. And uh, you'll see in a little bit, there's a hex screw on the magazine release. And I believe that's what this is for. This wrench is used to remove the flash hider. And I'll show you that later. Um, when I'm doing showing you the weapon breakdown So that's the uh, Accessories included in the red small parts bag So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the rifle out of the box along with the 10 round magazine here um, To get that 10 round magazine out is a little bit of a trick um, Let me get the rifle out of the box it's wedged in there in a couple of places. Uh, let me get that done and I'll be right back. I've got the rifle out of the box and I had to take that out first because of the way they have the 10 round magazine in there. And I just want to reiterate earlier, I incorrectly stated this was a 20 or 18 round magazine. That is not right. This is a 10 round magazine. Um, but the way this fits in there to get it out, I've had to kind of open the box a little bit and you really fight with that thing to get it out and so that's what it looks like we'll take a closer look at that in a bit all right I've got the rifle out of the box um, I've got it up on my table here and uh, it's almost, if a full-size rifle is almost too big for my table, but I'm limited to some space. Um, but you'll see here it's got the full-size uh, buttstock, traditional pistol grip. One of the characteristics of this firearm is the uh, vague copy of the Knight's Armament free float rail uh, rifle length rail system. And the folding front sight here, which is characteristic of the, uh, what is known as the Sam R rifles. And we'll look at that a little closer in a little bit. So we're just going to start at the back of the rifle and work our way to the muzzle and take a quick look uh, at the components. As I mentioned before, this Butt stock is um, identical to a, a full size A2 or A4 stock. It has a back gate uh, latch here that opens the storage compartment. The uh, butt plate is plastic, the door is plastic. I think even the latch is plastic, but it's hard to tell. You do not have a 
um, buffer tube in the stock like you do on a traditional AR-15, A2, or A4. Uh, the 22 operates on a direct blowback system and does not have the buffer uh, necessary for the bolt action. And it's just it's hollow sounding, um, pretty much empty, but we'll look at that in a little more detail. Let me shift the rifle here. So moving up to the receiver, you've got a two position selector. You've got fire that's all the way back. That's a, on a, a class three NFA item. That is typically the auto setting or burst. There is no center setting up top here. And then you have safe. So you have safe and fire. And you have a fake uh, third pin molded into the receiver there. Your uh, data there in the receiver says Colt Manufacturing Company Incorporated, Hartford, Connecticut, USA. You have a simulated bolt release that does not actually function, and you'll see that a little later. You have the other side of the magazine release, and then you have the laser engraved magwell markings, which is a rampant Colt, uh, the Colt trademark emblem. It's M16 rifle caliber 22 long rifle, and then the serial number. So moving a little farther forward, we have the rifle length rail system here, which is supposed to represent the, the Knight's Armament free float rail system seen on the Mark 12 Mod 1. The rail covers uh, work the same as what you see on the M4 and M5 rail adapter systems. You have the spring clip that you push on to release the tension on the back side, and it slides left and right over your 1913 rail. Uh, let me get my camera down here. So you can see there's no gas tube in there. Again, this is 22 long rifle. Um, there is no use of the gas system to manipulate the uh, action in the firearm. So you'll see there's no gas tube going here into the gas block front side assembly like we're used to seeing with a traditional AR-15 uh, M4 carbine type system. Walther included three um, 11 rib panels uh, with the rifle. And when I say 11 rib, that's counting the number of these ribs on the on the rail cover. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So when you see numbers in reference to rail panel length, that's what they're talking about. There's one here, one on the bottom, and uh, one on the opposite side. So let me adjust this and we'll take a look at the front sight. So the front sight on this rifle gets a lot of attention uh, because of its resemblance to the Knight's Armament sight that was used on the Sam R uh, Precision Marksmanship Rifle. And so you have a lever here on the front that moves left and right. That's a locking lever. Um, left is in the locking position. Move it to the right. And that should unlock it. Maybe I have it backwards. There we go. So I'm going to move my camera here and give you a, a 360 degree view of this thing. So it uses a standard uh, square. My, my lighting's going all over the place, and I apologize because of uh, how I'm moving in relation to the object. 
instead of giving you a bunch of still images, I'm trying to move around it. Um, but it uses the A2 style square front sight post, same detent type. And then again, it just folds up and down as a locking mechanism. There's no barrel markings that we typically see on a AR or military rifle. And then that brings us up here to the flash hider and its removal with the wrench I showed earlier. So let me get that wrench and I'll be right back. So as part of the maintenance on this rifle, you, really, you uh, remove the flash hider in order to be able to disassemble the rifle. And the, the wrench that's included goes in the second slot of the flash hider, and there's flats that it slides into. And then to loosen it up, in this case, it turns away from me. And then it just turns off of the barrel. So the flash hider is the A1 style. It's got uh, flash ports all around the circumference of the flash hider. Um, there's where it threads onto the 22 caliber barrel. Now I'm going to try to pick this rifle up and show it to you. But this is not a traditional barrel design. Um, this is a what looks like a barrel with a uh, 22 caliber insert in it. So now that we've got that off and you've had a chance to see what that looks like, um, let's come back here and see if I can take this apart. These pins fit extremely tight in this thing. Yeah, I'm going to have to go get uh, hammer off my gun bench I'll be right back all right when I took that break to go grab the hammer off my gun bench uh, to loosen that rear receiver pin I, I realized I hadn't shown you the other side of the receiver or the rear backup iron sight so what you see here may be familiar to some of you already it is a replica of the Knight's Armament 0 to 300 meter backup iron sight that was seen in the original SOP mod program. You have your rear uh, sidearm that pops up there. You have your uh, windage adjustment knob right here. The actual military uh, rear sight has a rubber or plastic insert there for uh, long range, short range changes. That is not a included feature on this. Um, I'm not sure why the designers of this rifle chose a zero to 300 meter sight. I think they count on their customer base to not really be familiar. Uh, those of you that are smart on the SOP Mod or Mark 12 Mod O or Mark 12 Mod 1 program, you're already seeing that this rifle is just a mix of features from, from, from those. And then over here you've got the uh, ejection port cover. Um, it's just a standard metal door and pin. And spring the locking mechanism here is plastic though which which kind of surprised me um, and then it says let me get it focused in here for you it says license trademark and new Colt holding corporation made by Carl Walther Germany and back there uh, behind the magazine release, U.S. importer, Umarex USA, Fort Smith, Arkansas. Then you see you've got the 
tick mark in the reverse of the selector with the safe and fire markings. Here is the hex key I mentioned earlier for the smaller uh, hex wrench that comes in the tool bag. Um, I have not disassembled this uh, to that extent, so I don't know exactly what that does, and I'm not going to disassemble it because I'm selling this, uh, actively trying to sell this right now, so uh, I'm not taking it apart any more than just field stripping. So let me adjust things here, and we'll separate the upper and lower receivers. All right, I've got the front and rear uh, receiver pins started, so I'm just going to finish pulling them out. <laughs> They're not captive like they are on the on a traditional AR platform. They do come all the way out, as you just saw. So your rear pin is shorter than your front pin. It's just the way that's designed. And we'll separate these. So here's what the lower receiver internals look like. That's a hammer, obviously. Here's your bolt catch I mentioned earlier that's not functional. It just sits there to make the rifle look more correct. As you can see here, uh, this is walled off back here. There's nothing inside the buttstock body. So you see some discoloration here on the bolt. That is because of test fire. I have not fired this. This is as it comes from the factory. Um, you have an assortment of their quality control marks and stuff there. Serial numbers on the bolt. So this is what the internals look like uh, looking up through the bottom of the receiver. You can see the movement of the bolt there. I'm going to try to give you a view at the back here. So again, there's no uh, reciprocating uh, bolt carrier or anything like that when this rifle fires. Everything is stationary. Uh, it's a direct blowback uh, bolt there. The long hex key is used through this opening here to adjust rate of fire for the firearm to function reliably with different 22 caliber loads. Um, there's no T marks on any of the rail surfaces, as you can see. T, R, L, B, any of that. Just look at the bottom. So pretty, uh, pretty simple and. Separating the halves like this and cleaning the best you can is all that the operator's manual shows. You can disassemble it farther. Um, not something I'm going to do here today. So let me reassemble this and I'll give you some closing thoughts. So this uh, M16 SPR variant in 22 long rifle is one of the more rare versions in the Colt Walther uh, firearm series. And so I bought it kind of on a whim at the time that I got it. My thought was is I would collect all four of the 22 long rifle uh, systems, but I've realized I just don't have time to go down another road. I've got several more rifles in my collection uh, from Colt that is the primary interest of my viewers. So I don't want to waste time. I don't have really 
covering these 22 caliber rifle designs. Um, over overall, I, I think the rifles built pretty well for the money. Um, it would have been interesting to kind of shoot it and see what it does as far as performance goes, but again, I don't I don't have the time, and I would rather pass this on to the next owner, unfired still, than you know shoot a few hundred rounds through it just to have an opinion on it. Um, we didn't really look at the magazine, but you've got spring tension here that enables you to load rounds down through the top. It's keyed in the back to fit in the magazine well properly. So there's no way to put the magazine in backwards. But overall, not a bad gun. I'm, I'm glad that I bought it so that I could take the time and at least be familiar with the quality and the construction of the Colt Walther product line. But anyway, I hope you have found this video um, entertaining, somewhat informative. I apologize for the quality in it. Um, I'm still struggling with doing videos and I'm, I'm hoping to get better soon and provide you a better quality product. So I appreciate you coming back and putting up with the challenges that I'm having and uh, we'll see you in the next one.